The above list is a set of pre-programmed profiles. They might make it easier to install things like desktop environments. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in again. This is Michael Crump, and today we're going to take a look at Arch Linux Guided Installer. Let's see what they have. Over here, we've got Arch Linux downloads. We have the release information. And by the way, this is just at archlinux.org slash download. And in the release notes, it called my eye and it said the installation medium now provides a guided installer. So it says this addition to the default method of installation based on the installation guide is similar to other methods. If you use the installer, do not forget to mention if when asking for support and also to provide the Arch Linux log when asked. So there's a couple of ways that you can download the latest image. Uh, what I typically do is I use Deluge. I usually click on one of these torrents and you can see this is actually one of the methods that I use to download uh, a lot of different types of torrents. So let's take a look at the guided installer here. So I can click on the installer and it says just another guided arch installer with the twist it appears as if this arch install has been integrated into the iso image that you download so scrolling down through this just want to take a quick peek and see what this has it says the installer also doubles as a python library to install arch linux and manage services packages and more so installations a pseudo pacman on a dash s for arch install and let's see it looks like you can also script your own installation okay so let's take a look now at installing arch linux april 2021 edition create a new machine i'm going to go next here on my installer disk image I am going to click on browse and there we go. There was the image from today. We'll go ahead and we will click on next and we're going to use Linux and for the version here, be using other Linux 5.x and later kernel 64 bit. And for this name, we're just going to go Arch April next. And for disk size, we'll go ahead and give this 20 gigs and we will also split those out. We're going to hit finish here. Let's go over here to edit virtual machine settings and let's go down to options and then look over here in advanced. And from what I understand so far, this will only work with UEFI. So make sure that that is checked. We'll disable side channel mitigations. So that should help us with some speed. And I think we're going to leave pretty much everything else uh, just like it is. So, okay, go ahead and let's power on up that virtual machine. So I'm using VMware in this instance. Uh, you can absolutely use whatever is best for you. Close out of this dialog. We're going to click in there and we're going to take the default option. And there we go. We can start to see it starting to uh, boot up where we've got our very familiar welcome to Arch Linux. Let's keep letting this thing load. It automatically logged in Arch ISO login root and it says automatic login. This also appears to be a new updated uh, graphic here. I don't recall seeing this uh, before. And it says to install Arch, follow the installation guide. For Wi-Fi, use the IWCTL utility, which is what we know and love. It does have one now for mobile broadband, and that's with the MMCLI utility. Ethernet, WLAN, and WWAN interfaces should work automatically. So I don't really see any sort of mention or thought there about the new installer. Let's take a look at our console font. So show console font. Okay, and let's fix up the uh, font here. So we're going to go look in the font directory. Let's go to CD, USR, share, KBD, slash console fonts. Let's do an LS-L here. We'll just pick one of the 32 uh, font size ones. So we'll go set font TERV32N and press return. Okay, our font should be a little bit better now at the moment. And looking at the guide, it stated that you could run this pseudo Pac-Man, but since we're running the guided installer, then we would want to use this one, which is Python-M arch install and then guided. So let's type that in here. Okay. 
appears to be working there. You can enter question mark or help to search for more languages. Select one of the above keyboard languages. I am in the United States, so I'm going to pick 21 here. Select one of the above regions to download packages from. We will pick 51 here because we are again in the United States. We started to you know, set the localization. So the steps that I worked through before, now it's just basically taking care of those for you. So you don't have to manually type anything. Disk number one, which was dev slash SDA, it's 20 gigabytes. The other one there is our CD-ROM. So we'll select one there. Now it says, which file system should your main partition use? We're going to use ext4. Now it is saying, enter disk encryption password. So leave blank for no encryption. We probably don't want any encryption on this disk since we're just learning a bit about this new installer. But it is interesting that there is an option to enter a disk encryption password just through the guided installer. So they are thinking about security. We're just going to hit enter on this one. Desired host name. I am going to go arch April, enter root password. So we'll go ahead and give it a root password here. Okay. It says enter a username to create a additional user. I'll go ahead and add my own user account in there. Give that a password. This is very nice. It says, should this user be a super user? So we'll go ahead and go yes there. We'll be testing that out once we get into the environment. And do we want to create an additional user? No, not right now. The above list is a set of pre-programmed profiles. They might make it easier to install things like desktop environments. Leave blank and hit enter if you want to skip this step, or you can enter a pre-programmed profile name. So I'm definitely going to take zero here, which is what we also set up in our Arch install. And it says you need to select which graphics card you're using. This is in order to set up the required graphics drivers. Well, we are using uh, VMware, so number six for us. I would assume that that is going to install all of the VMware drivers that we need. And now it is saying write additional packages to install. Space separated, leave blank to skip. So this is where if we wanted to install some additional packages, uh, then we could type those in. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in the word git nano, and I'm not sure what the default packages are that they install, but I want to at least make sure I have at least two of these. Okay, another enter there. This copy ISO network configuration to installation, or you can select number one, which is my Wi-Fi card. It's a bit interesting there because I'm not sure what zero is going to do versus number one. So let's try number one and let's hit enter. We are going to want DHCP and a valid time zone for us is going to be America Los underscore A-N-G-E-L-E-S. So America Los Angeles. There we go. Before I hit enter, you can see a couple of things there. There is a profile package, my super user time zone. It does say null, which is a bit interesting there. Uh, for the NIC, it does say ENS33, and I'm not sure what else it may say up above. Let's try and enter here to continue. Formatting block device slash dev slash SDA on five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so it's adding the partition. It is doing the mounting there for us. It is interesting that I do not see git on here. So let's just let this run and I'll be back when it finishes. Hey everybody, we are back about an hour and a half, two hours later. I went back and I looked at this machine and it was still setting at this same exact prompt. When I looked up there and we mentioned this, or I mentioned this before, but time zone was set to null. So what I did was I went back in and I booted up the ISO image and I did the exact same thing. This time I typed it America slash Los Angeles. Maybe I typed it wrong that very first time. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure what was happening there. It says down here at the very bottom, it says that it installed these packages, base, base, devl, Linux, Linux firmware. It also states down there in installing packages, xorg server, xf86 video firmware, awesome, 
You can see we've got an X term there, some GNU free fonts, as well as open SSH, uh, HTOP, WGET, and then another nano there. And then creating user MB crump, and it set the permissions. You may now reboot. Let's go ahead and let's take that reboot and see what happens. Okay, it stopped all those services. It's coming back up again. Okay. And I'm going to log in as my username. Excellent. Okay, so we're in there now. So let's see. Start X. Okay, so this is awesome Windows Manager. Let's see if we can fix up the display first here. Just we have an awesome and then we have an open the terminal here. Also, they made a choice there for our terminal as well. Uh, I'm also wondering which shell that we have here. So let's go which dollar sign zero. So we are in bin bash. Okay, so there's no Z shell that's on here by default. Is there a CVT in here? Let's see. CVT. Let's try X, R, and R. Okay, so it does have a display connected. And right here, it is setting at 1024 by 768. Since we know this is called virtual one, we should be able to come in here and type X, R, and R. Output, virtual one, mode, 19, 1920 by 1080. So we'll actually take the 1440 since that is a valid mode. Okay. There isn't a lot of customization that they already have built into this. Type an exit again here and let's try a browser and there is no browser installed, which would be a pretty good thing, especially if you do not want all of those sort of things already installed onto your machine. So up here in the right hand corner, a US Tuesday, April the 6th, and then a 719. Go ahead and let's install a browser. sudo pacman dash sui, and we're going to install Firefox on here. We're going to accept that. Um, once that installs, I would like to see if there is any sound drivers that's included, or if that is also something that you need to download and maintain yourself. What I am thinking is that since we're having to download the browser and stuff, um, it basically just gives us a complete configuration by using that installer that now we can go in and we can set up our sound card or we can set up all the different uh, bits of functionality. And now we should have Firefox. Let's try to launch Firefox now. Okay, we're also going to use that floating mode, which I actually like uh, quite a bit. Just head on over to our YouTube, a random video that is focused on music. I am not hearing anything. So more than likely, we will need to go and download stuff such as like Pulse Audio in order to get the music to work. Okay, so let's head back and let's take a look at some of the remaining uh, pieces here. So let's close out of that window. And we can take a look at the FSTAB file if we want to. I just super usered into root and let's go cat etsy FSTAB. And let's see here. So we have SDA2 EXT4. And then we have our SDA1, which is our bootloader. And we have boot. And then we have VFAT. And then when we installed this to SDA2, we used EXT4. So I would totally recommend you checking out the Arch and the guided installer. Uh, had a great experience with it here. Just had one little hiccup, which was on the time zone, which it may have been my fault uh, typing it in. But other than that, it's a great, great little tool. It opens up Arch for absolutely everyone, regardless of skill level. I think that I would even be using this installer on all of my new boxes to come.